Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill Williams on the Influencers Live. We're coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, and today we have a very special guest. I mean, very special guest today. Sophia Olivas, co-founder of Wisdom Forge. The uh, thing you're going to find out from uh, Sophia is this AI business that we've been hearing a lot about in the last couple of years has been going on for a long time. It's not new. And we have one of the pioneers in the business who has been working with it for decades. So let me bring her on right now. Welcome to Influencer Podcast, Sophia. Hey, Dr. Bill. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad you are able to join us all the way from where? Uh, this week I'm in Costa Rica. Yes, Costa Rica. One of my favorite jewels of the Caribbean. I love it down there. And um, so glad that you could join us today on the Influencer Podcast. I think everybody's going to really enjoy this show. We have 190 countries that turn in and we have people all over who are entrepreneurs. And your topic is uh, right in line with what we're discussing. Now, these are kind of like things that I noticed you do or are involved with AI strategies and real estate. And you speak all over the world. You've done a lot of things. So I want people to understand your background before we get into what you actually do. Tell us where you were, what happened, and how did you get inspired to do this big AI thing early before anybody ever heard of it? I'm really glad to be able to tell this um, story because I, I think it's important that people see that you can come from all kinds of backgrounds and still be able to determine and create and craft what your future is going to look like. So my origin story started around 14. I um, disagreed with how my father was raising me. I um, thought I could do better and I left and did way better, which included being homeless and starving, which was way better than what I was experiencing at home. And so I was very fortunate that I um, had this burning desire to make my life better. If no adult would protect me, I was going to do it for myself. And I spent all my time that I could um, in the libraries. And I think the librarians, they saw something in me and they just, I was a voracious reader and they just threw and became mentors and threw a lot of material in front of me and pointed me in the right direction, like Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, How to Win Friends um, and Influence People, books like that. And I started to get into Robert Allen's, uh, you know, how no money down real estate system. And Shortly after my 18th birthday, I uh, flipped my first property um, and used that money. I made around 38 grand, which was more than kids my age had made in an entire year. And I used that to start my first uh, tech company. And this is in the early 90s and it was web development. So I went and did um, all kinds of different uh, like um, bed and breakfasts, uh, mom and pop hotels, boutique hotels all over the West Coast. And then I went international with it. And that's how I started um, backpacking internationally is I just really got into the whole dot com and did a whole bunch of different things with technology uh, during that era and uh, travel the world. I've got about 35 countries under my belt and quite a few languages that I've picked up. And then when the dot com bus happened, I transitioned into real estate always following the, the trend. And I was too top heavy come 2008 because uh, I was pretty much retired. I sold my first company <laughs> um, shortly after my 21st birthday and uh, put, put that money into real estate. And then 2008 came up. I um, was very top heavy and I, and I knew better. You know, I had had my mentors taught me to be diversified and whatnot. But I, I went all in. And uh, so luckily, uh, blockchain and specifically uh, Bitcoin came into the scene to save all of us, you know, from what it what had happened. Um, you know, it, it was uh, created to be able to maneuver away from banks and mortgage companies and things like that to be able to fund our own projects and whatnot. And so I started getting back into technology, which transitioned me into blockchain, Web3, uh, and AI. And then I started working with and consulting to Fortune 500 companies. And then in November 2022, a company called OpenAI um, decided to make it their mission that everybody, not just the big guys, that everyone should have access to AI. And then ChatGPT came on the scene and I started to transition to help 
uh, the smaller people, like the small businesses and the entrepreneurs. And that brought us up to speed to where I'm at. Absolutely perfect. You know, I knew people along the way who did exactly what you did. But the one thing they didn't do was transition each time to the next best thing. Yeah. And they, they crashed and burned and they didn't pick it up as well. So congratulations for being so foresighted. Uh, right now, you're focused on employee to em em entrepreneur. So we're going to be talking about that most of today and how AI plays a part in that. So yes. I want everybody to kind of understand that this is a very big learning uh, time period on this podcast today. You're going to be influenced beyond your belief. You're going to be introduced to somebody who's totally knowledgeable and can help you with some resources. From what I can gather, your resources are very huge. And so uh, lead us off with a little failure story about what didn't work early in the game and, and what did you learn to recover, to get fully developed and uh, based on AI? Oh, well, greatest failure story um, isn't necessarily with AI, but it'll, it'll set the stage for that. So my greatest failure story was in my early 20s, I had raised $30 million in 28 days for a corporate entertainment project that I was um, creating. And I was building it on a waterfront in um, a city in Phoenix, Arizona. It's called Tempe. It's right next to Phoenix. Uh, where at the time, the project was uh, a waterfront project that was, and the football team, the Arizona Cardinals, they were looking for a new uh, stadium area. And it was based in Tempe at Arizona State University. They were using the university's stadium for, for years and they were looking for a new location to build a professional stadium. And uh, so that's where I set my sights. I thought, oh, for sure, the Tempe is not going to let the NFL team leave. They're going to do everything they can to give them, uh, you know, to get them to build there and keep them there. Plus, there's this waterfront project going on. And, you know, like I, this is my thought being in my early, early 20s. And what had happened was Tempe was never in the running for this stadium solely because of one thing. Tempe is in the direct path of uh, Sky Harbor, which is the international airport for Arizona, which is in Phoenix. And uh, the height re restriction, you know, the height requirements that they needed for a stadium, they would never get approval on because of the airplanes in the path. So uh, it, it went to another city and uh, everybody, the entire project was dead for years. Didn't get done for like, I think, I think it didn't get picked up for another 10 years. So all that work that I did, all my funding, everything was tied to this location and out of my control. So I learned very quickly on that when you're, and, oh, this is just such a perfect segue. I learned very quickly on that you do not tie your future to something you have no control over. So how does that tie in? Okay. You're an employee. You have no control of your future. You have tied your future to somebody or something whose whose job is to um, stay afloat, to be viable, which may run completely contradictory to your viability. So especially with AI coming onto the scene, there are going to be millions and millions of people that are going to be displaced out of work. And uh, I the reason why I co-founded Wisdom Forge is to help people make that transition from E to E, from employee to entrepreneur, or at the very least to get a side hustle going, a passive income side hustle that allows you to weather the storms and pivot when you want or do whatever you need to and have your, your survival, your means taken care of so that you can make that pivot. I heard you say it already. I'm just going to reiterate your motivation is to help the little guy. Yeah. I be successful. Want to you want to be the helper to the masses. And that really does resonate with us. Everybody that's on this uh, webinar podcast right now listening probably has that exact same motivation in their heart is to help the little people all around the world. And we have, we've connected to, you know, millions of people already around the world that want to do just that. So, we feel very connected to what you're doing, what you're actually doing. We want to do a lot of that. 
So tell us some success secrets that come from uh, how you can model using AI. Yeah, one of the best things. So this is like the internet all over again. So AI and blockchain technology, specifically cryptocurrency and the internet, they're probably the three most impactful gifts that have been given to humanity in all of our lifetimes. And they're all right up there with being just as important. Um, all of them, of course, needing the internet to function. So uh, with AI, you can just like when I first started in technology in the early 90s, I could have a small Airbnb, not Airbnb, B&B, &B, bed and breakfast, or a small boutique hotel compete with Marriott at the time because they weren't online and I could get these little companies online very quickly and they were able to just start booking like crazy. So it's the same thing with AI technology. You can take a mom and pop shop, a, a one person entrepreneur or a very small company and have them stratospherically uh, just start to compete with uh, and, 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 and at a level and grow their um, their ability to produce like a hundred percent, a thousand percent without increasing their headcount, lowering their costs by 70 percent, moving faster because you move to a 24 seven operation immediately when you start to leverage and integrate AI. So I think that that is one of the, the best things is uh, that anybody that is in a small business or entrepreneurial consultant, those type of things can can do is to grow their company to scale without adding to their headcount with reducing their cost and uh, reducing their time and giving them uh, time freedom and, and sometimes in many cases, location freedom. So you're not geo tethered. So that would be one. Another is to be able to uh, content, right? You need to get in front of people. And so social media is one of the least expensive, most organic ways to get in front of people um, for the cost. And you can, with AI, you can produce a whole year's worth of content in under five minutes. So that would definitely be one. And, and, and have yourself you know, automatically going in front of people. The other one is that you can, I mean, it's a tie, right? You're asking for three. So I'll give you some of my favorites, but you can have uh, an AI go and locate who your target market is. You give it the parameters. It can, it can even help you identify who your target market should be or can be. And it can go and find your target market and communicate with them automatically and answer the basic FAQs and pop over to you when it needs to be uh, up, you know, up leveled to something that needs a more human approach, like if it can't answer something. And that right there is is priceless because it's, it's a very human interaction. Very few people um, can tell that they're interacting with with AI in, on that level because it's very natural and um, and you get all that done and only get it kicked up to you on the things that really need your attention that only you can um, resolve. Uh, very good. Uh, three points. And I really agree with every one of them. But here, here's the rub. Uh, a small business out there really isn't going to master AI. They're not going to understand and master right. it. And so there's a question. Do they buy from you some product or is that client, your ideal client, going to discover this on their own by self-study? I mean, is it done for you or done with you or, you know, how is that? Yeah. So uh, we've got different levels. Um, we definitely have a lot of free material that's out there um, to, to help people that want to do it for themselves, um, that want to just start to point them in the right direction. And they can they can get the whole, like, I, I give away everything and tell everybody what to do. And if you're wanting to, you can dig down those rabbit holes and, and, and start to chip away and figure it out on your own. We also do uh, uh, programs that are really are do it yourself that walk you through step by step. Um, so you're not necessarily having to go, you know, dig up on Google and, um, and, and through YouTube and, and watch videos and certain things. We actually walk you through those steps. Um, so if you still want to do it yourself and yet have a system to follow that's already been, you know, walked through by many people and proven, 
then there's the do it yourself forms. And then there's also, you can just work with me and I can either uh, hold your hand and show you how to do it, or we can do it for you. Um, so we can either walk alongside you a little bit more um, in detail and, uh, you know, create a custom strategy, a custom AI strategy that um, that you can then integrate and implement yourself, or you can have our team integrate it and implement it. So there's a lot of different ways to work with us. Um, I, I do have, I'm being a speaker and working with the United Nations. I am very passionate about women's financial sovereignty. I believe that when women are financially solvent and they have their own sovereignty over their wealth, that the world writes itself. So I do offer free AI courses on Fridays um, for 30 minutes to women to the ladies only. Um, so that's another way that you can interact with me, ladies. And then, cause I feel like they'll go out there and um, they're the ones that mostly still take care of the families and raise the families and it's a lot of single families. So I just wanna make sure that the women are really taken care of. Um, yeah, lots of different ways. Sophia, do I have to be a woman or do I have to identify as a woman to be on your show? Um, so here's, I'm gonna tell you this. That's uh, a loaded question. The reason why we do women is because dynamics change when men come into the room. So we just wanna protect and create an environment where women can feel like they don't have to know how to do this. They don't have to be the best in technology. It's, it's really made for, for beginners and it's really geared towards um, what I know that women have to deal with um, and can go through uh, out in the workforce. So that's really the environment that we're creating in that. Sure, sure. I understand that. It's totally all right. Now, uh, how do you find your ideal client when you're getting business for your company? Okay, that's so perfect. So what I tell you what we do is what um, think about what you guys do. So the first step in, in securing your ideal client is to identify your target market, also known as an avatar. And the more that you niche down, which is the last thing that small businesses and the biggest pitfall that small biggest businesses run into. I walk up to them and I said, okay, so great. So who's your target market? And they're like, everybody. Okay. Well, if you're a multi-billionaire and you can spend billions on your marketing, fantastic. Go at it. If you have a limited budget, you need to focus. You need to just pick one specific type of target market that you can just knock out of the park. And it doesn't mean that other people won't gravitate towards you. It just means that you're focusing your efforts, your finances directed towards that target market and you're known for that. So um, yeah, so I have a very ideal target market that we work for. We work with um, and gear our market towards uh, uh, executive C-suite executives that are looking to make that transition or want to, they either want to make the transition to entrepreneurship or they are looking to add a side hustle um, to because they see the writing on the wall. They see what's going to be happening in their industry. Uh, you know, people in Boeing right now. My brother's worked for Boeing his whole life for like two, three decades. And he sees the writing in the wall. Right. So he's like, great. How do I shift? How do I, you know, things like that. So and uh, our target audience is like tends to be in the 40s, in their 40s. Um, so again, we niching down, you're niching down. Um, so that's the number one pro tip if I can give uh, to small businesses and entrepreneurs is niche down as tight as you can. Um, to Find your to correct help. avatar and just go deep into that one. Yes. Well, at this point, I want to bring in a mystery guest. Is that okay? I would love that. Oh, yeah. I want to bring in uh, Sadiq. Hey. He's my buddy, business partner, and uh, Sadiq, I want you to be, feel free to ask a question now and then, but the, the big question I've got for Sophia is um, what exactly is the best way to integrate AI into a daily workflow to enhance one's business? Sophia, this is your, your area. You're consulting with a company. What are you going to tell them they got to do first? Yeah, so low hanging fruit. First thing, look at and list all of the manual things, all your manual processes that you have um, within your um, systems, right? So whatever it is that you do on a day to day basis that has to be manual. Are you entering into a spreadsheet? Are you having to 
go and make phone calls to uh, clients, like whatever it is that you have to, do you have to manually post and find content to post and generate? Do you have to generate um, blogs, you know, articles, whatever that is, list everything down. Uh, and that is the first thing that you will look at is to where you can automatize with AI. So that's where you start to look at, uh, okay, this is where I need to integrate first because that's the low hanging fruit. I saw somebody on TikTok or Instagram the other day who had 300,000 followers and they weren't even a real person. It was just AI generated of uh, content. Yeah. Um, and the best way to do that, and most of the largest accounts on social media, they're faceless, meaning that there's not like a real person behind that. And the quick, I mean, anybody can do this, is just start posting with motivational posts, things that, um, or even puzzles. People love like, um, you know, take this, are, you know, are you CEO material? Take this quiz. There's a gem for you. Mm -hmm. Sadiq, you got any question about AI? Sadiq uses AI every day to to enhance his business. He's he's a user of the technology. Fantastic, so, Sophia. I appreciate everything what I learned I, from you already. It looks like we'll be friends for the rest of our life together because I am a student for life. Life to me, I learned from my mentor is learning is forever. Learning never yep. stops. Yeah, I agree. Oh. What, who are your ideal client? What type of industries and niches you have worked already and very successfully, they're easy to adapt. Which industries are adapting it very quickly? And some of them, nah, it's not touching me. I don't need it, you know? Uh, so again, I've, 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 this is my third iteration in revolutionary technology. The first being the uh, internet. I had so many people, because I tried to approach bigger, bigger clients back in and they were like, they went the ways of Kodak and Blockbuster. They just thought they were so big that they didn't need to make the transition online. And so then I started working with the ones that knew that that if they did, they would A, remain in business and B, thrive. They could take over and take a lot of ground while the big people were trying to figure it out. This is a little bit different because the big players have already been in AI for decades. They're the only ones that could afford it because it costs billions of years <clears throat> annually to do this. So I, I do, there's a lot of times, because uh, uh, I started opening up Latin America, which is why uh, one of the reasons why I'm in Costa Rica and Central America is I, I feel like uh, in addition to helping smaller people, Latin America was just, um, could really, you know, they were just like, what is this AI? So I see that still with small business and entrepreneurs. A lot of times people are like, I just don't get it. And I'm like, what you don't get is you've been using AI for over two decades. Every person has, because if you've used Google, if you've used Netflix, Amazon, they've all had AI protocols in them. And, you know, Alexa, Google Maps, all of that has had AI. So everybody's been using AI for at least two decades. The thing is, is you have, you have yet to use it to leverage what you're doing, whatever project you use. And you could be an employee listening to this and still, Use it to make yourself invaluable to your company, indispensable um, by being like out producing your coworkers and shining and, and, and being able to contribute at an unfathomable level to make you the shining star and get you to get promoted on super fast track. So uh, amazing, very enlightening information. So based on what industry is picking up from your client base, what industries are really adapting it fast? Small yeah. ones. I'm not talking about a billion dollar company. Forget all that. Yeah. It's too big. You know, I'm talking about a little guy with a $10 million company, $20 million company, or $1 million company. What, the, what yeah. are the niches? Which industries are adapting this fast? So it's agnostic. AI is agnostic. I, you, any company, any, just like with the internet, the advent of the internet is agnostic. Every company, I don't care who you are, what you do, there is always a way to incorporate uh, and, and uh, assimilate and integrate and leverage AI. So if you want to know which industries are, um, I guess, using it, the embracing it the best, I, I would definitely say the medical industry. Uh, there have been, I mean, it, AI has already um, mapped all of, all of the entire genomes of the human genomes, um, which took us 
a very long time. And it's figured out things that we hadn't already done. Massive breakthroughs in uh, in diabetes prevention and uh, curing of diabetes. I mean, so many things. Uh, C2 fractures, all, you know, quadriplegics are now able to walk with the advent of AI, um, neural links, and, and all kinds of technologies. So I, I would say some of the biggest impactful embracement is going to be seen in the health. Um, but it, what I'm quickly seeing is the entrepreneurs embracing it uh, very fast because they know that they can grow their teams and uh, without adding to their headcount, right? They they can you can bring on what would take a, a team of a thousand very like in in minutes with AI. You can have a team of a thousand in just learning how and bringing on AI without adding to your headcount. Uh, Sophia, yeah. you know the Chat GPTs and the Gemini's, the OpenAI. Define which of these platforms that you like, or do you build on all of them, depending. Yeah. So the answer is yes, I do. Uh, I, I, they all have great things that they're good for. And this is what I tell people, especially when you're starting out. Uh, when I talk about AI, I'm talking about like the main five AIs, because there's, there's hundreds of thousands of AIs at this point. And if you add on the GPTs, oh my gosh, there's, there's probably over a million types of AIs going on right now. And every day, hundreds of thousands are being added. So when I'm talking about AI, we're talking about like the main five, like the 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 Chat GPT, the um, Gemini, the Copilots, the Grok, things like that. We're talking about an anthropologics stuff. So it's like a, a physical trainer, right, or a personal trainer, whatever you want to call. It's preference. So it doesn't matter. Pick one, and just start working with it. And when you get really good at that one and start with the free version, start with the ones because like Grok charges. So right off the bat, I would say pick something that is free. Start working with it daily. Use it for everything. Like uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, so chat GPT um, has a wonderful function on the app, on the phone app. And I just put my earbuds in. I don't have it now. I'm just going to tell you guys because once I tell you guys this, you're going to be like, is she, does she have it now? Uh, so I keep my earbuds in and, and you, there's a, a talk feature where it can hear and it, and it talks to you. You can pick a voice, like if you want it to be male, female, and it interacts with you verbally. So I have it in my ear and I tell it, okay, we're about to go into this meeting, listen for what's not my voice and feed me information based on the questions and comments it's making. So the whole time, it's like my little secret CIA earpiece in there. It's like my little genius talking to me as I'm in a meeting or in a presentation, whatever it is. I mean, that's just one pro tip right there, but you can, and, and it can do anything. It can be your therapist. It can be your motivator. If you want it to be your Tony Robbins, you just tell it, hey, I'm about to do this. I need you to remind me how incredible I am and let your AI blow smoke, right? Like just let it go to town with you. Yeah, you are great, Sophia. Yeah, it just goes on. And and because I've already fed it my bio and I've worked with it all day long. It knows all my projects I'm working on. And, and, it, and it reminds me of wins that I had forgotten because I'm so focused on the challenge at the moment, right? Oh, that's such a good pro tip. Do you have a feature that you really do value about? Is it just not one? You can't stop with one, but what's your best? Um, well, that feature would be my favorite. The 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 um, the verbal feature where I can just put it in my earbud and uh, it can just talk to me the whole time as I'm going through things. It catches and picks up. It knows what my language is, uh, you know, and it it saves time. So I'm going to talk about ChatGPT um, now, the, the uh, paid version. So when you get to where you're using AI and you've you've got a good hold of it, and when I say good hold of it, it's the command prompting. It's how you communicate with the AI that you need to practice day in and day out. AI is way smarter than us. It's way faster than us. So if you're not getting the response you want, you can only look at yourself. In technology, we call it, uh, you know, Giggo. So garbage in, garbage out, right? So that just means that you just, you you haven't quite yet learn to speak to it to get the results you want. So you can only look at yourself. So it helps develop us as humans on clarity, uh, especially I can speak about Americans. We tend to, to, we're not clear. There's so many miscommunications and grievances that come from miscommunications. We think, like, I think what I'm saying to you is clear, 
but you've got a whole nother comprehension. So you'll see that um, AI, if you work with it daily, it builds that that articulation and clarification within you because you'll be like, oh, that's not, oh, that's how it interpreted it because that's what you said, but that's not what you meant. And then, so it's really great. AI can really uh, take somebody who's limited in, in their language and pick them right up. Oh yeah, I, I learned so many languages. Um, so some people ask me, well, how many languages do you speak? I go, all of them. And they're like, well, what, do you, what? And I go, yeah, I have Google Translator. I can speak every language. So, you know, you talked about the good points that are in the chat GPTs and the, uh, the open AI system, but there's something that you probably wish there was going to be that's not yet there. What do you see in the future needs to be added? Um. Well, that, that would probably um, bring this conversation to uh, a different turn. So what's inevitable, whether we want it or not. And, and this is also something I would say to your, um, to your people, that it doesn't matter how you feel about AI. If you're against it, if you're for it, uh, how you feel about it, it really doesn't matter because it's here. What matters is what you do with it. And that, what you do with it, is how it's going to impact your life. So what's inevitable is AGI and ASI. So um, where um, the uh, AI no longer needs human input and it can think for itself and it can replicate and create itself. Uh, I believe that we've already been there. It just hasn't been publicly announced. And that is where we're going to go. I, I see so many applications that are beyond our comprehension. Like you say, they're probably already there. Uh, People being able to take a movie and create it by thought. You just type the words in and the movie shows up. And that's already been done. Yep. Sadiq, we're working together. And four or five years we've been working together, Sophia. And uh, we walk around the park to keep up our exercise after sitting at the desk all day long. Oh, that's great. And about a year ago or two, we were talking about AI. And so we downloaded a free version and started just talking about what it would do. And it was actually playtime for us. Yeah. And in that one year since that time, year and a half, Sadiq, you can kind of fill us in. We have developed an entire business around using AI in, in our business. Sadiq, where are we today compared to where we were a year ago? <clears throat> million, million years difference. We travel a million years in one year. One year. <laughs> and we are just getting started. We have no idea where we are going from here. We probably need a direction from Sophia. Sophia, I will be your biggest client ever. You ever had it. <laughs> Has it done for you, done with you, DIY? I'm a complete idiot. I have my goal. I want to be certified idiot. Help me out. Yeah, Sadiq speaks the truth too, you know. Yeah. He, he, he definitely is a sponge. So he will be yeah. your biggest client one day. <laughs> fantastic. And I think that that is a healthy way to approach uh, technology is, um, you know, technology is, is it can be a tool or it can be a weapon. And that weapon can be what you use against others or others use against you. So choose. Yeah. So when the Google came and it was a one cent a click in 2000, now I'm dating myself. Okay. You know, and one cent a click, we were a cost of acquisition of a client was $4. And we yeah. were buying something for $72, selling for $82, merchant cost, customer service cost, and everything. I was almost like a trading dollars. Okay. And we sold for millions and millions of dollars, became a number one worldwide and e-commerce business. We sold in 20, 2008 when everything was going down. We sold for multiple seven figure. Then I had a four, four exits, multiple seven figure already. This is my fifth company, and I don't know where I'm going. Just you know, I need a direction from you, Sophia. Okay. And I think my clients tell me um, we are really good at what we do. However, I inside I see it. I need a Sophia in, my, in our life so that way we can learn from you. That's it. Happy to help. Yeah, we watch and we see um, everybody retires from one business and goes to another. I, I just finished 50 years in dentistry, Sophia, and um, kind of joined forces with Sadiq at the end. And 
we decided we would go into the uh, IT business, the AI business, uh, marketing, helping people grow their businesses. But bottom line is we want to help the little people be successful, not just the big cats. We want to find the little people and give them the tools. So finding you really does place us in the same heart space. Fantastic. So what is your goal? Where, where do you want to end up? Um, well, for me, it'll be in philanthropy. Um, you know, I've been, I've been at this for, for over three decades. So I will be, you know, I will use myself up as much as I can and start to transition into um, philanthropic endeavors. Um, so still be doing it, but just a, a little bit different uh, of a cut for it. Uh, for me, I, I definitely uh, do want to uh, continue to focus with uh, assisting women, uh, especially during this transition that we're about to enter. I, you know, the government isn't going to be able to move quick enough with something like UBI, which is universal basic income. And people are going to, you know, you can't say, especially if your people are listening to my voice, you can't say you weren't warned, you, you weren't, you know, pro properly prepared. This isn't something, this is something that you have sole responsibility for, because you can see the writing on the wall and it's your family, your loved ones. You know, what are you going to do about it instead of waiting around for uh, governments and politicians and outside forces uh, coming up with solutions. You, you have the power because you have now been given AI. So, uh, you know, take charge and own up to that responsibility and hold yourself accountable for for mastering and leveraging this technology. So that, that leads into the question of what's the advice you're giving to the young people? If you had to do it over again? Or yeah, so... You know, Oh, it's so fantastic because I um, am co-authoring a book with um, with my co-author Arena, and it's for college students. Um, we're so it's it's geared towards uh, those that have just are starting college this this year right now. Because in four years, when they graduate, whatever they study, it's not going to exist. Certainly not in the form that it does now, but more than likely won't exist. And those jobs that they're going for aren't going to exist. So what do they do with that? you know, and, and, and how linear education has failed them because many of them, I mean, I, I just taught classes. I was on the partnership program for Berkeley and I taught those students AI. They didn't even know what AI was. And that was the last semester. So none of them have even gone on and used it, not even like chat GBT. So I, I would tell you um, for the generation that's coming out and a lot of people have seen this because um, I was just on a call a couple of weeks ago and the oldest person on the call was 27. Um, most of them were between 15 to 22, and they were all multimillionaires. So this this technology it, it is unfathomable how fast and quickly you can make money. It's just uh, indescribable. Like the 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 way that technology is allowing and the ease of which to get into markets and capitalize and just dominate. Um, so I you know, they're growing up in this technology and, and I'm not really worried about our youth. I, I'm, I think that they've grown up in this technology. They know how to, to use it and master it and they don't have our filters. It's, it's the older generation that I have uh, more focus on and more uh, concern with uh, because there's pivoting that's going to need to go on. And uh, you know, you, you want to adopt and let go of, of, all those paradigms that, you know, working for the same company until you die and that companies should take care of you with retirement packages. And just none of that is there anymore. So that's really more that I have focus on the younger generation. They, they want to be, you know, they don't want to be geo tethered. They want to be remote working wherever they want. And they, so they've got it great. This is going to feed right to them. This the AI, they can be yeah. remote. Digital nomads, as we call them. Yeah. How can we support you and connect to you? Yeah, um, I will go ahead and I think there will be links provided to your people. Uh, if you are um, for the ladies on Fridays, I offer the free 30 minute AI training. It's you have to come on screen and uh, you've got to be on your laptop, can be on your phone, multitasking or off camera, because if I'm giving you my time, 
expect you to give me your attention for those 30 minutes and we just get straight to work. It's, it's right hands on. So that's one way to do it. Also, if you want to sit down with me and tell me what's going on and have um, a short little consult, I've offered a, a really quick start 30 minute concert for your people for 47 bucks. So everybody can afford that to just jump on, have a little bit of conversation with me, tell me what's going on and let me start to get you pointed in the right direction. Okay. That's very good. I will include this in your show notes on YouTube also. Yeah. <clears throat> tell me, uh, how was your experience on being on the show today with Sadiq and I? Uh, so first of all, I think it's always a pleasure to be with somebody that's in the technology and is still wanting to learn and, and, and you know, gravitate. So I am committed to continuous personal self-development and growth. And so it's, it's wonderful to, to meet somebody that's like, oh, I know what I'm doing and I can always learn more. So I myself, I'm always constantly seeking out mentors and people that are, you know, still more advanced. There's always going to be somebody more advanced than you and in yeah. what you're doing. So that's fantastic. And uh, Dr. Bill, it, just thank you for allowing me to reach more people, to motivate, to share my story, because I want you to know, you know, if I can go from being homeless to owning uh, one of the first women to own a crypto hedge fund, sky's the limit. You know, actually, there is no limit. So you can um, you can create and manifest uh, and generate your life. Uh, in, in the manner that you see and that and that makes you happy because I for sure know that I'm happy. You know, I work from beautiful locations so that I don't ever have to take a vacation because I'm, I'm like, why would I take a vacation? Where am I going to go on vacation? I, I, I work from all these gorgeous places. I live on a vacation. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, you, you were chosen to be on this podcast. I told people it would be very special. I don't think they had a clue it would be this special. So thank you yeah. for what you've uh, gathered together and shared with us today. And uh, with that, uh, I want to give you the final word before we uh, go into talking about the IT business that we're involved in. So it's all yours. Thank you. So I would say that technology is meant to enhance the human experience. So again, however you feel about it, the moment that you can let down your resistance and figure out how to leverage and use technology is the moment that it begins working for you and becomes your tool. So this is a, a moment in time where you can really make your dreams come true because you can do things on the side um, and have all these extra hands through AI without having to add on extra cost and extra headcount. So I just implore you to uh, start to use AI and use it for all kinds of things. Ask it questions, have philosophical discussions with it, tell it your dreams, tell it your fears and let it. Um, let it add to your life and um, let it uh, and work with it. The biggest thing that I would say is to there's two ways you can work with AI. You can direct AI, which is what most people are doing. And you will short, short, short change yourself um, by doing that. So that's something like write me a blog. OK, great. Write me an article. That's directing AI. I say collaborate with AI and make yourself and allow it to build you up. And, and, and that's how you get original work. So a difference in collaboration would look like we're going to write an article on E to E, transitioning from employee to entrepreneurs. Don't make any assumptions. Ask me questions. And here's my thoughts on the matter. Let's craft this together. And then you tell it your thoughts on the matter and it'll start to ask you questions. It'll say, well, do you think anybody can make the transition? from employee to entrepreneur. And then you answer, and then it'll ask you another question. That's collaboration. So when you work with AI through a collaborative efforts, you're going to build yourself up and you're gonna come out with an original work that has your voice be amplified. Thank you so much, Dr. Bill, it's been a pleasure. All right, that was excellent. Thank you so much, Sophia. Uh, Sadiq, I want to give you one last uh, opportunity to ask a question, Sophia, since she's our guest on the show and you're a special guest. I have earned the right to be on this guest. Uh, this is my first time. You have done 200 of them. I, and he, Bill is so nice and good friend. He did not give me a chance to come on the show. Sophia, you are so special. See, yes, you can come in. That's it. I earned my right after 200 shows easily. That's a one. Second is, let's have a let's have a call. Not right now, but however, after this one, we will schedule the call together. I I see your message is so clear to E to E, employee to entrepreneur. 
That's amazing. And you want to get into philanthropic work. We have done it for over, Bill has done it for most of his life, professional life. And I have done it for the last 10 years or so, trained over 200,000 people. Whatever you want to do in philanthropics, as far as the legal is impacting and empowering other person, you have my vote on this one. Not only I, you have my vote, I will support you to achieve what you're trying to achieve. Because we have the, that level of workforce, digital workforce, AI, and everything we are in 24 countries right now and my little very small thing and with your help we can go to everywhere Thank you. well there there you have it that is a definite call to action and uh hopefully the the freedom can be yours if you're watching today and you want to know more about what's going on click on my top digital qr code which will give you my digital business card at OVU. Or if you click on the bottom QR code, you'll get to more of uh, AI technology and what we're doing, building SaaS products, products that are hosted on the, on the web for you. And you can use AI technology at its best. I'm uh, introducing this to Sophia and she's getting a look at it as we speak. So she'll find out as soon as she wants to look at it, what we're doing. But the main thing is, I wanna highlight two things before we go today. And I think Sophia's gonna be a little bit uh, impressed with this question of what would be my best two? One is our uh, vi visual uh, video conferencing platform. And the future feature that's gonna be added very soon is to speak in any language so that you can speak in English and be heard in any other language simultaneously. You've already alluded to it, it's in your ear. Yep. And we're gonna have that in our video conferencing uh, platform and it will take over and be a, a major player in the world on that. The second one is Oh Bless, which is our um, gift to the world. We give away a crowdfunding and, and training yeah. system for people to earn an income, to ask for donations, to market, to promote their nonprofits, their startups, their uh, NGOs, anything that's uh, applicable, this old bless will be a product that will be able to be downloaded for free and used to bless any startup business or any uh, nonprofit business around the world. So here we have that available and we want to make that available to anybody who asks for it. So with that, Sophia, Sadiq, thank you for being on the uh, Influencer Podcast today. It's, a, it's a, a, a banner day because Sadiq showed up and I got to introduce him to Sophia. Yeah. And one of the things we don't want to do with the Influencer Network is introduce top level people to each other. So I think we did our job today. Thank you guys for attending. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next Influencer Podcast coming to you live from Atlanta. It's Dr. Bill Williams. Take care. Have a good day.